Hey everyone, it's Ivan over here on TFB TV, here to bring you a little look into Kalashnikov USA. If you're unfamiliar with Kalashnikov USA, start out basically as an import company. When that essentially all dried up, tried to pivot, start manufacturing, and kind of fell short. Since then, there was a bunch of restructuring to include bringing in a new CEO, Jonathan Mossberg, and with that, a bunch of other people kind of from the industry. And so all of a sudden they ended up with well over like a century of experience within the industry and moving forward, starting to make some pretty cool guns here in the USA. I was fortunate to go out there and check out the factory and kind of see how things were made. Pretty big, pretty awesome facility, like these giant presses for pushing like rivets down, stuff along those lines, whole paint area. Also got to check out the QC, just kind of some of the process that the weapons go through as far as like, hey, this is the tolerance. It's either going to meet it or it doesn't. If it doesn't, gets kicked back and weapons moving forward from there. We also went over to the indoor range where beyond just like test firing, I think it's pretty cool. They actually proof weapons. If you're unfamiliar with proofing, it's essentially a way of like testing a firearm. So you get special proofing rounds, which are like way overloaded per like SAMI or anything else. Like Just, uh, super, keep the proof super round in the so high pressure weapons. Like you can't go buy them. They're essentially yeah, what someone would accidentally make. They were hand loading or something along so those lines. Like well beyond the tolerance thresholds of what ammunition should be. But you get these proofing rounds, basically take the weapon, put it inside this jig, inside this box, put a string on it, put the one round in, close it up, shoot that round. After that, the weapon comes out, gets inspected. It either it passes or it doesn't. If it passes, it gets a proofing and stamp a and actually ball ships ball out. Load. All the weapons coming out of Kalashnikov USA since Jonathan right. Mossberg took over, all get proofed. And the reason for it is to basically make sure that the weapon will hold up to well beyond like the threshold pressures. Reason being, if Close some patch, idiot hand loads back. something way too hot or at the factory, maybe they're making plus P and plus and go. there's like at three point, extra pluses on the back end right here, for whatever reason, product. because there's so some sort of malfunction. And means a gun's not going to blow up in your hand, which is a good thing. I don't want a gun blown up in my hand. While we did do some shooting there in-house at their indoor range, we also went to a really cool indoor range called Nexus Shooting, where we got to spend a bunch of time with our weapons, both in kind of your standard indoor range facility, and then also a pretty neat kind of essentially like projected scenario type shooting, where different scenarios will basically play out on a screen and behind that screen is a bullet trap and it will log your rounds whether they're hits or misses and things on the screen will react appropriately whether it's just some kind of pretty much like target fundamental type stuff for time or even some stuff where basically like these waves of undead coming at you which honestly was just a lot of fun they're at the range, definitely put some rounds to their KS-12, essentially Russian Sega pattern shotgun. Thing was pretty rad, ran great. There were a couple times where it wasn't cycling correctly. Reason being, with especially a 12 gauge and all your different loads, like from birdshot to like low recoil stuff, all the way up to like your like three inch like magnum slugs and stuff along those lines there's a huge power difference. And so anytime you would switch kind of from one extreme to the other, it might have a trouble cycling, but really easy fix. Simply this wrench, adjust the gas system on there and basically tune it to what you're shooting. And you can absolutely kind of find a sweet spot that'll cover like most of it. But then as soon as you go to extreme, like extreme to extreme, probably have to adjust it a little bit, but spend some time shooting that. And probably one of the cooler things they have, which is I believe right now just kind of getting released as of filming this, basically in the March, beginning of April, they're gonna be coming out with their Comrade, spelt with a K, which is a firearm per the ATF. 
It's kind of really weird definition. Not a rifle, not a shotgun, not a pistol, but thing's pretty cool. Spend some time behind that. I think my favorite offering is actually the KR9, which for all intents and purposes is the Russian Vitas. Why do I say all intents and purposes? Well, something very unique to Kalashnikov USA is rather than trying to reverse engineer this, they actually have the data pack. What's that mean? Well, basically they are making the Vitas, their KR9, to spec, like per the plans, to include even down in the magazine, which are awesome 30 round magazines. They're actually really easy to load, which is nice. Sometimes those things are bare. And yeah, like they're made to spec. If you want to get arrested by State Department and basically taking guns, magazines back and forth, all that stuff is literally interchangeable between the KR9 and the actual Russian VTAS. Pretty amazing. As far as the different models, they have both a rifle with a 16 inch barrel as well as a pistol. And then of course the most fun is their SBR. As far as the stock, it uses essentially a skeletonized side holding stock. And as far as skeletonized stocks go, this one's actually really comfortable. Like the tops are basically rolled over. You can get a good cheek weld on there without this thing just like grinding into your face under recoil. But the thing is actually a lot of fun to shoot. The KR9 also has some nice features such as actual Picatinny top rail for mounting optics. Not to mention half by 28 threads for any type of one, either muzzle device or if you want to run a suppressor or something like that on there. Price wise for the rifle and the pistol, around 1250 MSRP, whereas the SBR runs around 1350. As far as like accuracy, controllability, blah, 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 like yeah, definitely pretty controllable, pretty fun. Accuracy, I don't know. I think the first I shot it at was probably about 20 yards and definitely needed to drift my front side over. But no, the thing is fun and at some point would like to get more time behind it and see what it can actually do like outside of just a indoor range environment. Pretty neat little weapon system though. As far as price wise on the shotguns, KS-12s, anywhere from about 950 to 1100 MSRP for the Comrade probably around a grand when it comes out. So it'll be south of that as far as like street price. Something that's really cool, I think, with respect to this company is the fact they're making like two spec Russian weapons here in the US. Not like a clone of a clone of a clone, but like to the spec with that data package. I think that's pretty amazing. Of course, question being like, where's the AK? Like 762 by 39. It's coming. I'm not sure when, but eventually it will be coming. And when it is here, it'll be made to spec, which is pretty cool. But thanks for checking it out over here on TFB TV.